Welcome to Idlewild Cottage, a quiet place where kindred spirits can linger together over a cup of tea, savoring all things lovely and cozy. My name is Juliana, and I'm delighted to have you. Each episode here at the cottage will center around a theme. That theme will be celebrated in a number of ways, through literature, art, nature, and even some favorite movie scenes, we'll cherish the sweet and simple things of life. So make yourself at home, and I'll put the kettle on. September 1921 The most universal sentiment in the world is that of mother love. It is the strongest force in creation. It holds within its sheltering care the fulfillment of the purpose of creation itself. In all ages, in all countries, it is the same, a boundless, all-enveloping love. Laura Ingalls Wilder As we look toward Mother's Day this coming Sunday, we'll join Laura Ingalls Wilder in celebrating this boundless, all-enveloping mother love. It's a love that is expressed in many ways, as we'll see through our time together today. Let's first open the pages of Laura's own book, Little House on the Prairie, where we see a mother as a resourceful keeper of the home and beautifier of her surroundings, even when home and surroundings are as stark and simple as a covered wagon and endless prairie. Ma kilted up her skirts and rolled up her sleeves, and she knelt by the tub on the grass. She washed sheets and pillowcases and white underthings, and she rinsed them in clear water and spread them on the clean grass to dry in the sun. We later read that Laura and Mary picked flowers and took them to Ma. By this time, Ma was folding the dry clothes. The little panties and petticoats were whiter than snow, warm from the sun and smelling like grass. Ma laid them in the wagon and took the flowers. She admired equally the flowers that Laura gave her and the flowers that Mary gave her and she put them together in a tin cup full of water. She set them on the wagon step to make the camp pretty. Then Ma took the iron out of the wagon and heated it by the fire. She sprinkled a dress for Mary and a dress for Laura and a little dress for baby Carrie and her own sprigged calico. She spread a blanket and a sheet on the wagon seat, and she ironed the dresses. Ma hummed softly to herself while the iron smoothed all the wrinkles out of the little dresses. Many episodes of the Little House on the Prairie television series celebrate Ma's strength of character, resourcefulness, and pride in her family. One of our favorite episodes, called Country Girls, especially highlights Ma's sacrificial love. Riled up by Harriet Olson, Carolyn has impulsively purchased fabric to make a new dress for herself. Meanwhile, the girls are growing accustomed to life in their new Walnut Grove school. They are very aware of their countrified dresses compared with the other schoolgirls as they prepare for an upcoming essay presentation. Well, on the morning of the presentation, Ma appears at the breakfast table holding up not a new dress for herself, but instead two new dresses for Mary and Laura. Laura's line is one our family often quotes. Ma, you used your yard goods to make dresses for us. My own mom reminds me a lot of Ma. This little house scene is a sweetly familiar one to me since my mom too enjoys sewing. As a child, it was such a delight to wake up in the morning and see a brand new gingham dress hanging on the back of my bedroom door. I know she burned the midnight oil over many a hem and stitch throughout the years, and especially so as my wedding approached. I couldn't find the perfect dress, and my undaunted, resourceful, absolutely wonderful mother skillfully combined multiple patterns and thousands of beads, I might add, to make the dress of my dreams. As we gather around the parlor of Idlewild Cottage today, let's take up our own sewing baskets. I imagine some of us will enjoy piecing together quilt squares, while others might work on embroidery. As we dip our needles in and out of fabric, 
we'll turn to admire the painting which hangs over the mantel. If you've been here before, you know that this parlor boasts an enchanted picture frame, so it's no surprise that the painting before us mimics our actions. We'll admire Mary Cassatt's sweet portrayal of Young Mother Sewing from 1900. Just a few short years after Cassatt painted this scene, J. M. Barry was imagining a mother for his play, Peter Pan, a mother with the absolutely perfect name of Mrs. Darling, and a mother with the most delightfully unexpected nightly routine. Mrs. Darling first heard of Peter when she was tidying up her children's minds. It is the nightly custom of every good mother after her children are asleep to rummage in their minds and put things straight for next morning, repacking into their proper places the many articles that have wandered during the day. If you could keep awake, but of course you can't, you would see your own mother doing this, and you would find it very interesting to watch her. It is quite like tidying up drawers. You would see her on her knees, I expect, lingering humorously over some of your contents, wondering where on earth you had picked this thing up, making discoveries sweet and not so sweet, pressing this to her cheek as if it were as nice as a kitten, and hurriedly stowing that out of sight. When you wake in the morning, the naughtiness and evil passions with which you went to bed have been folded up small and placed at the bottom of your mind, and on the top, beautifully aired, are spread out your prettier thoughts, ready for you to put on. Most often, a mother helps tidy up her children's minds by entering close as a confidant and friend. We see this time and again in Marmy from Louisa May Alcott's Little Women. Marmy is based on Alcott's own mother, so let's first look to this excerpt from the biography Louisa May Alcott, Dreamer and Worker by Belle Moses. The love between Louisa and her mother was very beautiful. Mrs. Alcott understood the struggles of her wayward little daughter, sympathizing with the turbulent spirit within her which made her so restless. The sweet motherly notes which Louisa often found between the pages of her journal were very comforting. One such note, written in response to a letter from Louisa, reads, My dear Louisa, Your note gave me so much delight that I cannot close my eyes without first thanking you, dear, for making me so happy and blessing God who gave you this tender love for your mother. I have observed your patience with baby, your obedience to me, and your kindness to all. Go on trying, my child. God will give you strength and courage and help you fill each day with words and deeds of love. I shall lay this on your pillow, put a warm kiss on your lips, and say a little prayer over you as you sleep. Mother. And so it comes as no surprise to find Joe March receiving a letter from Marmy in Chapter 12 of Little Women. My dear, I write a little word to tell you with how much satisfaction I watch your efforts to control your temper. You say nothing about your trials, failures, or successes, and think perhaps that no one sees them. But I have seen them all and heartily believe in the sincerity of your resolution. Go on, dear, patiently and bravely, and always believe that no one sympathizes more tenderly with you than your loving mother. A mother's love tends, tidies, and guides. And in the following excerpt, From The Railway Children by Edith Nesbitt, we see how a mother's love is also present and creative. By the way, this is a delightful book to read aloud, and if you enjoy audiobooks, do visit LibriVox and check out the version narrated by Karen Savage. Mother did not spend all her time in paying dull calls to dull ladies and sitting dully at home waiting for dull ladies to pay calls to her. She was almost always there, ready to play with the children and read to them and help them do their home lessons. Besides this, she used to write stories for them while they were at school and read them aloud after tea. 
and she always made up funny pieces of poetry for their birthdays and for other great occasions, such as the christening of the new kittens or the time when they were getting over the mumps. In Mother Carrie's Chickens by Kate Douglas Wiggin, we see how a mother can be a beacon of light to which her children come. And we also see how she just might develop an unusual nickname. Nancy came into her mother's room one evening when the rest of the house was asleep. I saw your light, so I knew you were reading, Muddy. I've had such a bright idea, I couldn't rest. Now, Muddy is not an attractive name unless you happen to know its true derivation and significance. First, there was Mother Dear. And, as persons under 15 are always pressed for time and uniformly breathless, this appellation was shortened to Mother Dee. And Peter, being unable to struggle with that term, had abbreviated it to Muddy. Muddy in itself is undistinguished and even unpleasant, but when accompanied by a close strangling hug, pats on the cheek and ardent, if somewhat sticky kisses, grows by degrees to possess delightful associations. Mother Carrie enjoyed it so much from Peter that she even permitted it to be taken up by the elder children. You mustn't have ideas after 9 p.m., Nancy, chided her mother. Wrap the blue blanket around you and sit down with me near the fire. In Five Little Peppers and How They Grew by Margaret Sidney, Mother love represents sacrificial strength, determination, and a cheerful outlook in spite of hardship. It was just on the edge of the twilight, and the little peppers were enjoying a breathing spell, as their mother called it, which meant some quiet work suitable for the hour. Times were hard with them nowadays, and since the father died, Mrs. Pepper had had hard work to scrape together money enough to put bread into her children's mouths and to pay the rent of the little brown house. But she had met life too bravely to be beaten down now. So, with a stout heart and a cheery face, she had worked away day after day, and she had seen with pride that couldn't be concealed her noisy, happy brood growing up around her and filling her heart with comfort and making the little brown house fairly ring with jollity and fun. If you'd enjoy a few other stories in which a mother's love is celebrated, sometimes quietly and sometimes overtly, you might enjoy the following movies. I'll just briefly run through some favorites. I Remember Mama is a slower-paced, heartwarming 1948 movie starring Irene Dunn which chronicles Norwegian family life in 1910s San Francisco. The 1950 movie Cheaper by the Dozen gives us the lovely Myrna Loy as Mrs. Gilbreth, who is never flustered by the busy activity of her energetic husband, 12 children, and the family dog. The 1952 movie Room for One More stars Betsy Drake as the mother who eagerly opens her already lively home to two foster children. And finally, the 1960 classic, truly one for the whole family, The Swiss Family Robinson, portrays the mother, Dorothy McGuire, as a gentle keeper and beautifier of the home, even when that home happens to be in a tree. As we opened with thoughts from Laura Ingalls Wilder, Let's close with excerpts from the journal of Lucy Maud Montgomery, who had her first child, little Chester, at the age of 37. Sunday, September 22, 1912. I am indeed a most happy and thankful woman. Motherhood is heaven. It pays for all. When the nurse laid my baby beside me, It seemed to me that my whole being was engulfed in a wave of love for that little blinking mite of humanity that lay cuddled to my breast. Love, such love. I never dreamed there could be such love. Motherhood is a revelation from God. God's own parenting kind of love toward us is beautifully expressed in the shepherd metaphor 
of Isaiah 40, verse 11. He is like a shepherd feeding his flock, gathering his lambs with his arm, carrying them against his chest, gently leading the mother sheep. Friends, wherever you find yourselves today, whether you are tending as a mother, grandmother, aunt, friend, teacher, or neighbor, would you too feel gently led, gathered, carried, and fed by our good, good shepherd? Thank you for joining me today, dear ones. Please come again soon to Idlewild Cottage.